as promised continuing the series of the weekly contest today we have weekly contest number 277 and let's shoot for the first question the question that we have in is count elements with strictly smaller and greater elements here in this question we are given an array of integers and we need to identify the count of those elements that have a number strictly smaller than that number as well as strictly greater than that number so there are few examples that are specified i'll be talking about these examples and the algorithm to go about it by the presentation so let's quickly move on to the ppt also i'll t tell you two approaches to solve this question so do watch this video till the end let's get started let me just start the slideshow count elements with strictly smaller and greater elements lead code 2148 so let's get started the question is quite self-explanatory let's iterate through various test cases and let's try to draw the maximum out of it here in the first example uh, we are given elements as 11 7 2 4 15 and for better understanding let's sort those up so the sorted list is something like this 2 4 7 11 15 and let's try and count those numbers that have a strictly smaller and a strictly greater element in the array itself so uh, let's let me ask you a very simple question does 2 have a strictly smaller element than it in the array no so this will not be part of the answer let's proceed ahead next we have is 4 4 has a strictly smaller element 4 also has a strictly greater element so any of these elements 7 11 and 15 contained for a strictly greater element than 4 that means we have identified one such number let's proceed ahead next we see 7 7 has a strictly smaller element uh, it could be either 4 or 2 uh, also it has a strictly greater element it could be 11 or 15 the count gets updated to 2 let's proceed ahead next we have 11 uh, for 11 we have three possibilities of strictly smaller elements and one possibility for a strictly greater element the counts get updated to 3 let's proceed ahead next we see is 15 for 15 we have four possibilities for smaller element there's no possibility for greater element and the answer finally turns out to be 3 what is the key point that we understood from this example we understood that the minimum element and the maximum element will not contribute to the answer because for the minimum element there will be no element which is smaller than that and for the maximum element there will be no element in the array that would be greater than that as a result of which mins and max will never contribute to the array uh, let's proceed ahead and let's walk through another example here we have specified as minus 3 3 3 and 90 it's actually sorted in nature by coincidence uh, so we understood that the minimum one will not contribute to the array the maximum one will not also contribute to the array what is left it is left with only two elements which is 3 comma 3 and the answer becomes to be uh, to be 2 in nature so the answer is 2 let's proceed ahead this is an interesting case we have an array as 3 3 3 3 3 5 90 and as you can see the minimum element occurs multiple times in the array so we what we can do we have to skip all such entries because they will not contribute to the array so this gets skipped 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 what is left we have only 5 and 90 turns out to be the maximum element which also gets skipped so the answer becomes 1 similarly uh, here in this case uh, we can see multiple entries for the maximum element so all such instances get skipped and what is left is uh, the, the these two elements 3 comma 3 there's a minimum element minus 1 which also gets skipped so the answer becomes 2 i hope you understood uh, this logic these various test cases and now let's talk about how can we go about it the first and the foremost approach is pretty simple and straightforward what you can do you can find out the minimum element and you can find out the maximum element in this input array store them in two variables then you start the iteration if your current element lies within the, the range of this particular two elements in that case you increment your count variable otherwise you simply skip it whenever the current element happens to be either equal to the minimum one or the maximum one in the end whatever count variable is held you simply return it out now let's quickly jump on to the coding section where we'll conclude the approach so let's get started uh, I'll walk you through the two 
solutions that I have provided. The one that I just talked is this one. You go and find out the minimum element and the maximum element from this input array. You create a count variable. If your current element happens to be within the range of max and min, you increment that count and return that value in the end. The other possible ways to sort this area, you create a low pointer. I am using the two pointer approach here, low pointer and high pointer. If my current element, the lowest element in my array after sorting is equal to the highest element in my array, the last element, then in that case, we simply return zero because all the elements tend to be equal in nature. Otherwise, I keep on incrementing till the time I am seeing uh, the, the low pointer as the minimum value. So in case my low happens to be equal to low plus one, I simply increment my low pointer. Similarly, I keep on decrementing my high pointer till the time my nums at high happens to be equal to nums dot at high minus one. And in the end, I simply use a very typical formula, high minus low minus one, which will give me the result. So let's try both of them. Accepted. Similarly, if I swap it, it will also get accepted. Accepted. Uh, the time complexity of the, uh, the this approach is order of n log n because we are sorting this input array. Whereas for the other one, the lower one, it's, uh, it's equal to order of n. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question.